All right. So, welcome. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be going over setting up the example tiny cart code on our ROS2 environment. Um, for everyone here, as you can tell, I'm not on the System76 laptop today. I'm on this desktop, which was a whole thing to get up here. Um, there's a reason for that. This does not currently have the tiny cart code set up on it, so we're going to be doing a bit of a, like a literal tutorial. I'm going to go through each of the steps to get set up, and hopefully by the end, we'll have it working. Um, for the viewers at home, you can probably skip ahead and see what how that turned out. So let's get into that. So what? So we use Ignition Gazebo here as our simulation environment. So it's a simulator for not specifically ROS and ROS2, but it's used primarily with ROS and ROS2. Um, and it just allows us to test our robots in an environment where, you know, if it flies off at 30 miles an hour, it doesn't go into a wall or someone's leg. Um, so it also allows for development at home when you can't be in the lab space 24-7 like me or Andrew um, or anyone else on the uh, eboard. So, yeah, Ignition Gazebo just allows you to create a scale model of your robot, simulate it, and then utilizing... Uh, sensors that gazebo has you can feed it data we can see in the corner here this is um just some of uh ohms uh gazebo stuff so we're going to be not quite doing this but tiny cart will be pretty similar to that once we get it working so first we have to install gazebo um so this is just going to the link for everyone who wants to follow along here there's a copy of this presentation in the tiny cart drive so if you want to pull that up you'll be able to access the links here so you can go ahead and do all the fun following along stuff so but while you guys do that i'm going to pop over to the installation link right here and we can see it's just ignition gazebo install so we're going to do the ubuntu 18.04 or above installation so we just want to take each of these lines right here and then copy and paste them into our terminal so i'm going to go into there's the okay so that's the first one let me boop, boop. Boop, boop, cool. Then we need to run this command. And then each of these commands are one line. So just go ahead and drop both all those in. And then we're going to do update. So this is just getting the Ignition Gazebo repository and adding it to our to the list of repositories that we have access to get packages from. Um, so we're just going to update so that it checks that repository and finds all the packages it can get from it. And then if we go down here, we're going to copy and paste this line, but this is important. We want to change where it has this little like carrot, uh, pound sign carrot. We want to change that to six because that's just a stand in for the version number because libignition gazebo has multiple versions. So one, two, three, four, five. We were up to seven at this point, um, but we'll be utilizing the sixth version today. Let me, maybe that's probably gonna be more helpful. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna yoink this and then drop it into the terminal, six, just like that. And then you'll hit enter it'll give you a million packages it wants to install. You'll hit Y and then it'll start installing it. So this is just installing both the simulator and all of the library files that it will need to run and be able to talk with ROS2. So while this is going, if you guys if you guys have any questions or have any issues right now, just raise your hand. Yeah, I mean, you can install that. You don't, ha they're not um, mutual. You can install, um, so the question for, um, the people watching at home was, do you have to install ROS2 before this? You don't technically. Um, you will need ROS2 for later on in this, but you can install this right now without it. 
So we're just going to let that go. Back over here, and we're going to just quickly talk about some of the tools. So if you're copying and pasting the commands and getting stuff to install, feel free to keep going. Uh, I'll, I can reiterate this in a minute or so. But just the required tools for the people at home is we need VCS tool, which is a tool that allows us to get other repositories from a repository list. Um, so this just allows you to download one or clone one repo, and then that repo will have a file that lists a bunch of other repos that it needs to utilize. And then you can just, with this tool, very easily clone in those dependencies so that you can easily build and use them. Um, we'll need pip, which is Python's package manager. So just allows for the installation of Python packages on your system. Um, and then we'll need raw step. I've mentioned this in a previous tutorial, but this just allows for the download and installation of ROS package of ROS package dependencies. So when you down, pull down a ROS package from the internet, it's going to have other packages that it depends on. So in order to make it easier to get that, where you need to install this. So and then these are just the steps to install it. So you would just oh yeah cool. Um, so you would just install Python 3 raw step and then if you don't have it if you haven't installed it yet you have to run raw step init um, right here and you only run this once you install so this is a you run this once right after installation and then you would do raw step update to get the de get dependency keys for all the different versions of ROS2 that are available so and then of course finally we have our to actually install dependencies from a ROS package we have our fun uh, long esoteric command that I'm definitely going to be copy pasting from here in. So. Yeah, barely. I just, I'm, I'm sort of zoomed in, so it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of whack. But yeah, so let me know when you guys uh, are at it. So currently this, um, this is the tiny cart repo itself. Um, as we could see, it's just several ROS packages um, inside of a bigger package. So here's a, the gazebo package. Here's a package that describes the robot's model. Here's the actual package that runs would, would run on the physical tiny cart. And then here, this package communicates with the embedded Pico board. So as I talked about a little earlier, we're going to be using raw step to grab the dependencies for this package because there are several. And we can see that in the tinycart.repos file right here. So we have, this just defines every package that we need, every GitHub repo that we need to clone and where to get it as well as what version of each. So that way when we run VCS tool on this file, it'll automatically grab all of the required packages and we'll just be ready to ride. So with Ignition Gazebo downloaded, we're going to go ahead and create a new workspace with make DRI, we'll call it, I'll call it TKWS. We're going to CD into that workspace and then MKDR, and then we'll create a source file folder. So now we have a source folder and then we're going to CD into that source folder and this is where we're going to be cloning the tiny cart repo. And if you guys have any questions or want me to repeat something, just raise your hand or shout or something. Um, it's all good. So we're going to jump back over to the GitHub. We're going to go grab the uh, URL for the repo. And then we're going to run git clone. Oh, and I also have to mention, to do this, of course, you do have to have git installed. Um, so to do that, you would just do sudo apt install git. And then I already have git installed on this computer. So it just says that git is at the newest version. Um, but you will need to have git installed to clone the repo and everything. So make sure that's in there. And then once you have that, you'll just do git clone. And then the URL to the tiny cart repo and hit enter. 
and then it's going to clone into tiny cart and if we just check what's in the folder now we can see that we have the tiny cart repo downloaded so let me just quickly though <laughs> run um show you how to actually pull down the the, the um, dependencies with vcs tool so i actually have to do this as well <laughs> jesus So we need, I have already pip, and then I need Python 3 raw step. Cool. So we got Python 3, so we got raw step coming down, and then we need to do sudo raw step init. Oh my god, I hit control shift C. Uh. Okay, and then we just run. Make sure that when you run raw step update, you do not run it with sudo. That will break things later on. Ugh. There it goes. Josh, are you actively dual booting right now? Oh, okay. Send it, send it. Okay, so with raw step installed and VCS tool installed, first we want to grab all of the packages from GitHub that we are going to need to run. Um, so we are going to be doing that by doing VCS import. And then the little, I guess, less than character to push into. And then we want to point it at the file. So the file that we're looking for as I mentioned, is this tinycart.repos file. So to grab that, we're just going to, inside of our source folder here, we have our tinycart folder, that, that's what we just cloned. And then we're, we want to pull everything inside its repos file. So we're gonna do VCS import tinycart and then tinycart.repos. And we're gonna hit enter. And we're gonna say yes. And it's gonna crash, great. Why? Oh no. I don't have a key on here. I forgot to check for that. Uh, okay. Cool. This is actually something you guys are going to run into. So, pretend everyone pretend this is all planned. Editor, make sure this was all planned. <laughs> so, what happened there was we don't have if we look at the file, we have these URLs that are git at github.com and then the URL to the repository. This is an SSH URL. So this is, you would SSH to GitHub and then grab it. Whereas what we did earlier, we just grabbed the, H, the actual HTTPS URL, which is available to anyone. But if you want to use the SSH key here, you need to have a GitHub account logged in as well as a SSH key if you want to be able to commit to any repos. Um, so we are actually gonna have to set that up really quick. So, yeah. Six and a half hours later. So we've logged into GitHub. If you're following along, you will also have to log into GitHub. I apologize now. So, what we need to do is we need to make an SSH key for this computer so that we can access all of the repos and be able to write to them should that be required. This will be, you'll need to do this either way if you're going to develop inside of your um, VM because otherwise you will not be able to actually push to your repo. So we're just going to go through this now. So we're going to go, here, let me pop back. So we're going to go to the little user icon. We're going to go down to settings. We're going to go to SSH and GPG keys. And we're gonna to go to the guide to generate SSH and GPG keys because I don't have these steps memorized. So we're gonna generate a new key. 
this is just more copying and pasting commands. Um, of course, with you know the ISC robotics email, so we're not. Control shift B. So this is going to generate a new SSH key for us. Let me put this down. And you want to use whatever email address your GitHub account uses. So you want to use the same email here when you generate the key. So we're going to hit enter. And then you just want to, so it's going to generate the public private key pair. It's going to tell you, do you want to save it to a file? This is, this one, this value right here is just a default. So we just want the default. So we're going to hit enter. And then it's going to ask you if you want a passphrase. This just means that if you want to use the key, you would have to put in a password every time you want to use it. Um, generally, I don't recommend that. It kind of breaks VCS tool in my experience because it tries to ask for a password like a million times and it dies. So I would just hit enter for empty no passphrase and then again for same passphrase again, so just nothing. And now it's generated our SSH key onto our computer. So if we go back up here, it, this documents all the steps as well. GitHub's documentation is pretty great. If you go to the actual generating SSH, the SSH GPG key tab in settings, it has the guide there as a link. So now we're just going to jump down to this step. Just to spin up the SSH agent. And then we just want to add the key that we just generated to the agent. No, not bogus. Boop. So this, of course, this of course assumes the file is going to be the default. If you put in a different file name, you will have to specify that in SSH add. But you know, if you're just following along with the default, then you're good. And now the SSH key is on our computer, so we just need to add it to our account. So we're just going to go to this guide that they link right at the very bottom at the last step, step three of adding the SSH key to your SSH agent. Said SSH a lot. So this again assumes the same um, key value, same key file name. So we're going to control C that and then control shift V. And then that's going to give us the public key for the SSH key. And then we're going to pop back into, if I, so going back into our profile, into settings, and then into SSH and GPG keys, we want to click new SSH key, name it something fun. And then you want to grab the value inside of that it's just catted out. And then you want to paste it into this box. And hit add SSH key. And that's it. So now the key's been added to our account. But I think, I think we can do get user on email. Yeah, it'll tell me. So now that we have an SSH key that we can use to access this, we can try and actually fire off this command again. I think it's going to yell at me one more time, but let's just quickly try it. Yep, OK. So this is what you should get if VCS tool succeeds in cloning the repos. So it just says cloning into, it just gives you the name of the folder that's put the Git repository into, and then cloning into the folder that you're currently in. Um, and then here's all of them. So now if I ls the source folder, we can see that not only do we have a tiny cart folder, we also have all of the other repos that we will need to make tiny cart go. So let me just give you guys a quick second to catch up. Comment down below how many sticks of RAM are in your laptop. <laughs> so we've pulled down all of the, all of the repos 
they're all sitting in our lovely source folder inside of our workspace. So now we need to run our long and esoteric raw step command in order to grab the dependencies for all the repos and then one extra one because it's weird. So we're going to pop up here. I'm going to blatantly copy and paste this from the slides because it's long and I don't want to type it. So we're going to jump into the top level of our workspace so we only see the source folder. And then we're going to copy the raw step command in, hit enter, and I have to put in the password. And it's going to run. So this is just going out and grabbing all of the dependencies required by all of the packages uh, inside of our workspace. So we're just going to let this go. Meanwhile. 40, 40, 40, 44,000. 4. <laughs> 4.4 gigahertz RAM. You know, when someone watches... If someone watches this in 20 years, when if YouTube still exists, and tell, write in the comments if 4.4 gigahertz RAM exists at that point. Thank you. 20 minutes later. Okay, so we finished our um, installation of the raw steps. Now we do have to grab one extra package because for some reason it doesn't pull it down. I don't know why I ran into this literally earlier today when I was practicing. So just for simplicity's sake, you just want to download this package, which is just the point cloud library for Ross, control shift V, and enter. And we're uh, almost done. We just need to do one more thing. As I mentioned earlier, we do need pip, and that is because TKIO, TKIO Ross is a package that communicates with the Pico embedded board that comes that is currently on the stock tiny cart. Um, the example tiny cart so that requires you to install the package um, and its dependencies through pip because it's python and it's different um, so yeah so to do that we just want to cd into the source folder Whoop. and then we want to run pip install install please is this actually installed yeah okay cool pip install and then tk Oops. homie what k i o ross slash uh, actually what is it ugh I did this earlier what it didn't pull down Oh yeah, it, it, it's in tiny cart. I'm an idiot. My bad. It's in tiny cart. So you're gonna do tiny cart, tk, io ross. So you want to pip install this. So just run this command inside of the source folder of your workspace to install the pe the Python package. And then finally, we've installed everything that we need to build the workspace. So we're going to back up to the top level directory of our workspace and we're going to run the funny call con build. And see if it dies. That's fine. I mean, yes, it's living. It's throwing warnings. Yeah, so. It's done, so now we're going to source our workspace with dot install setup dot bash. And finally, we're going to do ROS to launch to use the launch file inside of TinyCart. Um, tiny, tiny cart. And then we want to launch gazebo. Launching robot would be if you wanted to launch the actual like if you were actually going to run tiny cart on the physical cart, you would want to launch tiny cart robot. But because we're simulating, we're going to run tiny cart gazebo and then tiny cart that launched pi. And if every, and if the stars all align, we get Arvis and foie. Foie. 
the time. One second. Here it comes. He's yeah, thinking about you, it. No, 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 no. Fwa. Yay! <laughs> Oh, I didn't bring one. Wait, I'm an idiot. Wait, Chess, does, does this give people a seizure if you go to Arbus? It doesn't. Yo, look at that. Thank you, NVIDIA, our lord and savior. Our lord and savior. So we can see the Arbus visualization. So we can see the map, all the objects that the LiDAR on the tiny card is seeing. So we can see the edge of that box, this cone, and this barrel right here, and all the boxes around us. And if I had a controller here, if I was more prepared... If I was any level of prepared at all, I would have brought a controller and driven it around for you. But I did not because I am not. So, but yeah, if you have an Xbox controller, Xbox One controller on you, if you, or a Wii remote, if you want to, if or a Wii remote. Honestly, I should probably tutorial how to turn on the Wii remote as well. But um, oh, okay, we're good then. Go look at that if you want to learn how to set up the Wii remote and drive it like Mario Kart controls, um, like literally the steering the Wii remote Mario Kart. Um, anyway, um, at this point, you now have a working environment with a working simulation with, and everything is dandy. And if we pop over to this new terminal, and I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And if I were to do ROS to topic list. It's going to give all the topics that we can see on our current, um, that are currently being sent to us. So, yeah. So that's pretty much what I have. And yeah, probably gonna end the recording here. It's kind of chaotic recording. Um, either way, uh, like, subscribe, hit that bell. Uh, tell me what your favorite step was in installing. <laughs> <laughs> the tiny car. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Installing the <laughs> tiny car repo to your computer. Cool. All right.